ship? The design is clearly ancient, in the truest sense of the word. Launched hundreds of thousands of years ago. Dr. Rush? Faster than light, yet not through hyperspace. What are you doing? Who knows how far it's traveled? Dr. Rush, I've got a lot of wounded. We need to get home. We've got a problem. One of the air vents just shut down in here. Copy that? Yeah, the air's getting pretty thin in here, too. What does that mean? That the life support system is failing. And we should probably do something about that. Um, in, in, in SG-1 and in Atlantis, there were there were big bad guys that, that our team was fighting, and they were shoulder to shoulder fighting, you know, the Gould or the, or the Ray. In, in Universe, because we wanted to make it more of a character drama, and we, and we didn't have a big bad guy, that because uh, we, we didn't want there to be one, because we're on a ship just going, we didn't want there to always be the same enemy out there. Uh, the, the the characters are both heroes and villains in this series. These the guys enemy, are the enemy is us. Sometimes, and and we found within this series, uh, with the, even within season one, our characters, uh, our, our actors, our performers are so good that that we've been able to take them in, in, in peaks and valleys of, of uh, heroism and, and villainy uh, back and forth. I mean. Honestly, they can all slip in and out of the skin of a hero and villain, and, and it's fun to watch. It's fun to see the dynamic go back and forth because it's about survival. I mean, people are doing remarkable things to stay alive and to uh, achieve what they think is the right thing for them all to stay alive, and they're not always in agreement. In this case, uh, we were, as we were conceiving the series, Robert and I were writing the pilot, and 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 in the original breakdown, Russia's character didn't wasn't even there. But as we were writing, I I said, you know, this this character is becoming a very interesting character that would probably attract someone of Robert Carlyle's uh, status more readily than any of the other characters on the list, really. And uh, he was always number one on our list. And we just never expected to get him in a million years. We really did. We thought, because okay, you never do. You know, you get your dream list, and you know, the Robert Carlyle's of the world are on the top of the list. And uh, Paul Weber, our, our casting director, said, "I think I can set up a phone call. Why don't you guys get at least at least get on the phone and, and see, what, you know, if you guys click." And we clicked. We got along great, and we laughed, and we had a very similar philosophy on how we'd like to to do work. And and uh, he he hadn't even he didn't know anything about Stargate. I mean, he hardly knew it. So we sent him some of our uh, favorite episodes. We didn't want to show him any dogs. You know, you're going to get a few in 300. And uh, and he liked them. He said, this is this is really interesting. He'd never done anything like this. And so we, we got along great. And, and uh, you know, he read our, our, our first draft of the pilot, liked the character, liked the writing, and he was aboard.